Hello and good afternoon or good morning, whatever it is, year four. And this is now Tuesday, the 12th of January, 2021, Maths Edition Lesson 2. First of all, I want to mark through the work that you did yesterday, that you did on Monday. These are the answers to Monday's work. Pause the video now and see how well you got on. If you've made mistakes, try and see why. If you've got a couple of questions wrong, often it's the same reason why you get things wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. Try and look at a pattern, yeah? If it's the wrong, for the same reason, so for example, sometimes when I mark work, I notice that the children always get the eight correct and the four correct, but they might not get the tens correct. So see if there's a pattern, see if you can figure out why. Okay, now you're all marked, let's move on. Okay, before we had credit cards, we used to have things called checks. And if you wanted to pay somebody some money, but you didn't have cash, you would write out a check and then they would claim the money through the bank. So you actually used to write these out by hand and you used to sign them with your name. I've got six checks here into groups of three and we have to, in two groups of three, and we're gonna be adding up three three digit numbers today. So the first one I can see is written 278 pounds only and it's written in digits as well so you've got numbers and digits numbers and digits for each one the bank often the bank has got a name so you might have lloyd's bank barclays bank hsbc bank halifax bank there's lots of different names of banks santander bank there's a big one of those in lewisham i know so let's look at adding these numbers together if i pull the numbers 278 132 165 out of there. I can put them into a place value chart, which is going to help me do my addition. Now, remember when we're adding, we can do the expanded method or we can do the compact method. So let's just have a quick look at the expanded method. If I just flip the screen a little bit so it's easier for me to write. Before I start though, I think it's worth just looking at the first three that we're gonna add. 278, 132, 165. I could put those straight into columns, but when I look at them, I can see that some of them do not need any exchange. Oh, special alarm there from Mr. Bose. Thank you. They don't need any exchange happening. If I add two of them, yeah. You might have noticed that as well. If I had 132 and 165, I've got no exchange. I can see the two and the five make seven. The three and the six makes nine, and this makes two. So it's 297. So it's always worth looking for shortcuts when you're adding. So you could say that this is actually going to be seven, 90, 200. Add this number here, which is 200, 70, and eight. So always worth looking at numbers, looking at shortcuts. If you wanna write them all out and that's clearer for you, that's perfect. So let's have a look at, oh, yeah, often it's a little bit slow with the um, catching up with the pen. Here we go. 278. We've got 130 and two. And I've got 160 and five. So you write them all out like that, partitioned, and then you simply add up the columns. So eight and two is 10 and five is 15. Note here, I've got a 10. Seven and three is 10, add six is 16, but it's 100 and 60, <clears throat> excuse me. And finally, I have simply 400. Then I have to add these together as well. So I've got 400, add 160, add 15 is going to be, well, if I put these two together, 
I know I'm going to have 560 plus 15 equals 575. So there's the expanded method. The compact method, exactly the same, but you're not writing the digits out partitioned. So I've simply got 2, 7, 8, 1, 3, 2, and 1, 6, 5. When you're doing your addition today, you'll want to write these out in columns and make sure they're in the right columns. Only this time, we've got to do it slightly differently. When we move a digit from this column, say the ones, into the tens, what's that called? Yep, we're carrying or we are exchanging. To carry or to exchange, we're moving it out of here because this column, as we already know, adds up to 15. But I can't fit five in the whole column. Sorry, I can fit five, but I can't fit 15. So the one gets carried over to here. So I've got one on top of there. One, add seven, add three, add six is going to be 17. But the seven goes here and I carry one again because it's 17. Here's my one and here is my seven, 17. So finally, I've got 575. So it makes a difference which way you do it. You get the same answer. So, we've added the first three numbers together here using the compact or the expanded method. Expanded being this one where you are, this one here where you are partitioning or the compact method like that. So, let's see what we've got to do today. Here's your spicy work. Four simple sums. Remember to write out the question number before you actually do the sum. And when you write out the sum, remember to line up the digits in the right way. So if I've got 273, add 54. Is that all good? No, what's the mistake? Where's the error? Thank you. 54 is in the hundreds and the tens column. So it's no longer 54, it's become 540. So let's just get rid of that. 273, and I've got the 5 in the 10s, the 4 in the 1s column, and now I can add that up. Okay, whoops, didn't need to do that. Come back to you again, please. Too much swiping to the right, that's what's going on, Mr. Bose. Bye, Mr. Bose. Bye. Sorry, somebody's just saying goodbye to me. I think that's Miss Azodo leaving for the day. Okay, so it's two uh, technical issues. 270. Here we go. Pen. Two, seven, three, and uh, 54 going there, and then you can add them together. There's four quick ones to do. Pause the video, do those sums now in your workbook, set them out neatly, and when you've done that, carry on to play the video a bit more and see what is the spicier work. Okay, so this is the spicier work. Maybe not so nice and spicy, but the spicier. Note when you're doing these questions in your book, you're gonna to have to write the question number down carefully. It's just like we have to do in class sometimes. We've got question one, then question two, then question three. After that, we go to five, yeah? I haven't given you question four too much. I want you to do these nine questions here. One, two, three, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. When you've done those and you want an extra challenge, if you want an extra challenge, you go on to the spiciest, which is here. It's a puzzle. There are many different answers. Answer these questions and explain what patterns you notice. 
So you're going to have to write an explanation. You've got three sums to do. You've got to do those, get them right. You'll notice there are patterns in the questions. So for example, this number is one, two, three. This becomes four, five, six. That becomes seven, eight, nine. Okay, so there's patterns in the numbers underneath as well. Just saying goodbye to Miss Pelage there. What about the answers? You've got your three answers. What patterns do you notice in the answers? You're going to have to write a sentence or two to explain what you see. Good luck and well done, and I will see you again shortly.